Yeah, welcome everyone to this, uh, by comparison, cold and dank uh, Wednesday morning. Our first speaker today is Herbert Gangel. He'll talk about the hour motor polylogarithm via iterative integrals. Thank you very much. Uh, can I be heard in the back? And uh, the mic is working. Right. Yeah. Thanks very much for the introduction and for the opportunity, uh, especially. Yeah, let me. This is joint work uh, with a member of the audience, uh, Stephen Charlton and uh, uh, Danilo Rakshenko. And, okay. And I was uh, trying to maybe give a plan as this is a tradition in more physics talks. So I'm trying to uh, first talk about iterated integrals, the classical one, but then also formal versions. And this, these will lead uh, to an algebraic fingerprint. And this is what uh, yesterday already uh, had been called a symbol. Then I tried to do uh, something similar for the so-called Aomoto versions, polylogs. Then I want to introduce uh, um, a new choice of coordinates. On a certain configuration spaces. Which are kind of turn out to be crucial for the the actual relationship. Uh, then our motor equals at least uh, on the symbol level equal to uh, sum of iterated integrals uh, relating the two uh, topics. That's roughly the plan for today. So let me start with the. Uh, classical uh, um, polylogs where we define like LIN of a variable. You've uh, doubtless seen this many times, z to the k over k to the n. That's defined in the unit disk and has an uh, continuation, analytic continuation or meromorphic to the uh, complex plane. And uh, here we have what we'll call the weight, weight n. And uh, here the length of this will be the depth, uh, which happens to be one in this case. Second one, and uh, once you've seen that, you know how to do that. Uh, say in for a general set of indices, take integers m and n. The weight will be the sum of the two, and the depth will be the number of terms here, which is two. And these have a uh, Avatars, they can be written uh, as so called iterated integrals of a specific kind uh, in the following sense. Let's introduce a notation double I. Now we'll later on take formal versions where I leave out one of those bars just to distinguish. We have a starting uh, um, index A0, then we have A1 to AN, reflecting what we had here as the weight, and then we have an AN plus one. Yeah, A0 and AN plus one, they kind of mark the um, kind of the boundary of a certain path. 
So let's try to be a bit careful. So we have a form dt1 minus a1 wedge up to dtn over tn minus an. And the, in, the integral is over a path. So it's a simplex that's kind of given by a path. So where gamma defines a path from zero one, so continuous map to C avoiding the middle AI and gamma of naught is the first and gamma of one ends kind of in the last. And then the delta is simply the set of all gamma of T1 up to gamma Tn with the uh, proviso that uh, T1 starts from zero, it's less than the next one T2, next one Tn less than or equal to one. So that's the integration cycle kind of, that's a simplex over which you want to integrate. And that's a differential form in terms of the input data A1 to AN. So, um, I think that's all. Yeah, so the uh, properties, well known. Uh, we form an algebra, even commutative, under the shuffle uh, product. Whenever you have integrals of that kind, you can shuffle them together. Then we also have something like uh, relations like path uh, composition, taking the same uh, differential form, but uh, integrating, um, matching or uh, gluing together paths, if they match. Then there's also something like path reversal. And there's a differential equation, which you can uh, associate. And we, all, we want to put all those into a formal object. Um, and now we go to the formal version. So with, um, so we have an algebra. Here, everything was kind of over C, so the classical statement, but now we take an algebra over F uh, to any field, at least characteristic zero, but uh, in principle, I think uh, that's maybe too, even too restrictive. So algebra over F. Um, with generators, so that leads to a definition of uh, generators, which uh, are es essentially the same as above, except that I'll take away the second bar to indicate the formality. And the relations are built on a precisely built on those uh, properties that are known about those integrals. There may be others which we uh, haven't found yet, but uh, these uh, conjectures should be characterizing it. Built uh, from the above, and I may have forgotten some uh, uh, ones, essentially the idea. Now the point of the differential equation, uh, this allows, a new feature, kind of not really visible on a new feature as a co-multiplication on those formal symbols. Um, on these, and these have been given um, by Montreux. The what we may call semicircle co product. You will see in a second why uh, this is uh, 
called this way. So it's a, even dual to uh, maybe earlier construction even of Ihara in a sense, and also related to uh, a co-product in algebraic topology found by Bowes earlier. So that was discovered by uh, um, Ralph Kaufman and, and collaborators so a while ago. So that there is there are similar such uh, constructions, but his one is particularly striking and very easy to remember. So what you do, so it's terms in that co-product are parameterized by, well, you line up those arguments in order the A naught is marks the beginning, a n plus one marks uh, the, the end of this semicircle. And then in between we have a one, a two, up to a n um, lined up uh, Perl-like. Um, and by um, sub polygons, so the convex, uh, if you want, sub polygons, which are kind of supported on the decorations AI, on the AI, with I from one to N, and always including, including um, both A naught and A N plus one. So a typical one would be uh, like, this is a K and this is a L, and we would uh, draw this as sub polygon, convex hull of uh, those. And this is essentially the way in which you collect the terms. So that will be a main part given by that sub polygon. And then there will be cutoff parts given by those uh, segments, which you then think again as uh, being semicircleified. So uh, maybe I can, not sure this is visible. So then the, uh, the co-product is, is the sum over all, all such, and we are only interested here today in a, a sub part. That's maybe called new n minus one one part of the co-product. So that means essentially uh, the main polygon only leaves out precisely one uh, of the indices. So think of a, of a triangle. Um, so if we have uh, the first case, here we leave out one. So that would be n equals two. We would have two terms. We leave out either the first of these uh, internal vertices or the last. And then the co-product essentially collects uh, yeah, maybe I should have been more careful. So it's the co-product of I A naught up to A n plus one, marked with semicolons and A ones in between, A i's in between, is the I associated to this main polygon. Tensored with well, all the other sub polygons, which kind of have come loose. And so that's a product over all I of the cutoff polygons. And uh, so over all possible ones. So that's the uh, sum over all, all those uh, terms. And the ones for the new n minus one one part essentially only cuts off triangles in all possible ways, but keeping 
That's a tensor product for the, uh, so it's a co-product. Yeah, no, the shuffle product is, is commutative. That's, that's a different one. Yeah, that's really the co-product. Uh, okay. Can you say? Is there any reason you're using a semicircle instead of a partition? Not really. It, it's just, I mean, for psychological purposes, it's really helpful to have this. Yeah, you could just as well work with, with indices, but I think this is so spot on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, Okay, so maybe one example. Uh, um, yeah, perhaps it's worthwhile because I'm using a similar formula later on to write that uh, special component of a coproduct in a specific way. So. The new n minus one ones. Maybe I should have called this uh, new instead of. Well, it decomposes into smaller parts of such, a, such an integral. We want a n, a n plus one equals. Well, there is a main term. Well, let's write it in in one go. Just leave out. Uh, no, the AI one. And on the right, we only have a single cutoff polygon, which essentially uh, has AI in the middle. And of course, it's neighbors on the left and right. And uh, I goes from one to N. So that's the part that we're mostly interested in. So for instance, in this example, for n equals two, we have two poly, uh, polygons in all up to uh, a three. And then the i a naught a one, let me take a special case where it's zero start the integral from zero. Then this is the usual notation of the one one logarithm. I hope if I get this right, then it's essentially a one divided by a three and a two by a three, which in turn is related to the multiple logarithm. So the version that I had on the board and just wiped out, where you take the inverse of the last and uh, you take the, the first divided by, uh, no, the, the last inverted, the first divided by the last. So they, that gives, I think, a two divided by a, a one. So that there are uh, ways to pass from the polylog uh, version, which is sort of the sum way to write it to the integral version by changing variables. And this also can be re related to those integrals. At least this uh, was still for the, with a double i. And then the formal version with the delta or with the new uh, one one can now uh, be written as the two terms, i uh, zero a one with a three, hence it with uh, i uh, zero, no, i a one, a two, a three. That's uh, this one, uh, is it? Yes, one, two, three, plus the one where we have uh, instead a two in the middle, and we have the zero still in front. Okay, um, now we can uh, identify, in fact, n equals one 
would identify I, uh, zero, A, and B simply with, uh, if you do the calculation, it's the log of, more generally say, A, B, C. It's log of B minus C over B minus A. So we eventually drop the log and think of uh, the whole thing as the rela modulo relations in among logs. We can think of the arguments and modulo the multiplicative structure here. So this gives us uh, in um, so I, n equals one, everything is isomorphic to f cross, essentially via by this uh, identification. So to each of those symbols, we attach sort of an element F cross, whereas here, the whole thing now can be viewed as in F cross, tensor F cross, where F is our chosen field. And this is roughly the idea in general. Here we get uh, U n minus one, this lies, in F cross for our given underlying field. And um, then this is sort of a, a version with smaller, uh, with fewer entries. Now the point is iterate, uh, iterate multiple iteration of this process, like the maximal, maximally iterated uh, um, um, composition of these. So we have new n minus one over one, then followed by uh, so k first takes n, then n minus one, going down up to two. So we multiply do that, we uh, get sort of uh, an f cross in every slot eventually. This gives us the symbol attached for our I, and it lies in sort of the tensor product of F cross with itself n times. And this invariant uh, is amazingly uh, useful. It's sort of an, that's what I originally called the algebraic fingerprint. Uh, algebraic fingerprint or symbol of of this I. And our, uh, our task is to relate the symbol for iterate integrals, a certain combination, to what we then now will look into the symbol attached to the Elmotor business. So I want to have the uh, great idea to say, uh, attach a period to um, any pair of simplices in projective space, so Pn, C. Maybe I call this pair, uh, I will always call it L and M and with, and L can be thought of as uh, a bunch of hyperplanes, L0 to Ln, which mark the, the algebraic simplex, or the, the, and, uh, and then M up to M0 to Mn in the same way. We will often dualize, or later on, we will dualize and view those as points dual to the corresponding hyperplanes. Um, already foreshadowing this. And what, what does he do in the following way? You take uh, L, will give you sort of the uh, integrate the, um, we attach a differential form. And to M, we attach an integration cycle. So, for instance, take the defining equations for the Li's. So if Li is given by uh, say, 
coordinate z i equals zero. You can try to. Then uh, you get d log of z one divided by z naught, wedge e log of z n divided by z naught. That's sort of a differential form that you can attach to this. And uh, an integration cycle, maybe it's best to view that in the real picture. Essentially, you'd take the homology class, the topological uh, cycle representing a relative homology class, but maybe that's Hn of Pn relative to the simplex M. And I think the associated real picture is instructive. So real picture or n equals two. So I'll try to illustrate everything in uh, the case n equals two in most cases. And there you have, yeah, so predictive two space, I have sort of three um, coordinate uh, hyperplanes. So that's marks L naught and L1 and L2 maybe as the two hyper, three hyperplanes. And then we have a, uh, M0, M1, M2, are sort of the second uh, um, simplex here. We'll integrate over, over that simplex, or the red one, so the compact part of this. And we integrate uh, a differential form, well, the, the standard volume form in this case, because if I've chosen those as the main coordinates, on form so that that's sort of the idea so we can attach to every pair of simplices such a uh, thing in general it looks like omega l and delta m so it's clear that this is um attaches to l m this and what polylog and indeed, it uh, generalizes the uh, classical polylog, but it's not obvious uh, how, how it does by certain degenerations. Here, I'm only interested uh, for exposition, exposition's sake uh, in the formal, in the um, generic version. So as before, we, we look at the formal version that encoded, that encodes the properties um ah so i have given you the properties uh sorry that our motor has found the crucial one is the third one so there are four of those uh, the first one is kind of a degeneracy so if things are too degenerate uh uh, put things to zero. Then, uh, so if, uh, for instance, we take the dual point of view, if all the li lie in a hyperplane, then uh, this should not uh, give us a non-zero integral anyway. So things like that should drop out. Also, uh, our construction is such that uh, we have um, PGL n plus one action of, uh, well, here is C. Um, Sort of simultaneously acting on uh, on these, and this should leave the pair essentially untouched. So the construction is sort of compatible with PGL n plus one action, purely projective. So we demand that for for every uh, g in in that symmetry group, things uh, do not change. Also, if we swap roles, then 
the, we only encounter a sign potentially, a skew, a uh, symmetric under the um, sigma in S n plus one, the so symmetric permutation of n plus one on n plus one letters. So sigma of L together with M is the same as, well, M together, uh, L together with sigma M. And this is the sine of sigma times times the original uh, LM. So only saying that if we swap two of them, we encounter a sign in the individual ones. We don't swap between L and M. And the last one, the crucial one, is uh, the additivity. So we take the sum over now one element more, the so homological e equation essentially. We take L naught up, to, uh, sorry, leave out the ith one. But now we take n plus one. So overall, we have n plus two Ls, but we fix our m, then uh, this is supposed to be zero to each of those where one of the li is left out, we attach an our motor polylog, the formal alternating sum uh, i from zero to n plus one uh, is uh, supposed to vanish. Well, that's what uh, the crucial property that he found, kind of a scissors congruence uh, property. And analogously for the m variable in the second one. So the essentially play a very similar role. Okay, so we now want to uh, also formalize this. That was, that was the idea, I think, of Beyonce, Goncharov, Shechtman, and Varchenko. So, uh, formal versions. Uh, Beyonce, Goncharov, Shechtman, Varchenko says, um, and so we take, as before, an algebra over a field again with generators, the formal uh, versions of this. I'm not introducing a new notation. I'm using, viewing those as the formal objects uh, and relations imposed by uh, zero to And uh, they found, um, that was, I think, 89 already. Uh, there is a relationship um, to a strong, um, how can I say, the, a very good candidate for um, category of mixed state motives over a field. And they checked, I think, everything in n equals two. But then uh, an issue arose that, uh, so the co-product issue is co-product only defined Uh, sensibly on um, generic such has. So while uh, there is strong evidence that this uh, will help a lot in understanding, uh, there is an important part still amiss. So that was only to uh, motivate why one 
maybe it looks at it in the context of uh, this conference. Okay, so uh, the formal version now also allows, I uh, already uh, uh, anticipated, also uh, they gave co-product, as I said, on generic um, um, such, such pairs. So what do you do? You take, uh, um, in general, let me write it like that. L M. You have a formal sum with a sign depending on subsets I and J that you're choosing as subsets of N, shorthand for one up to N. And you sum over all I's, uh, I and J. Yeah, here, well, I already wrote this here. Um, with I equals, hopefully the right way around, the size of I is N minus K and size of J is K. Then you get uh, expressions. There are two distinguished uh, objects, L naught and M naught. So distinguish one vector each. Say the first one, call it L naught and M naught. Then I have, oh, then one has a, a L i. So the sequence of all L i with a, a i in i. And then L n minus the, the i, so the complement of i. And here we have m j, where j is sort of of the same length. So this has length n minus k, because i has length. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Ah, which way around? Uh, I should have uh, maybe k and j n minus k so that we get the right, uh, we want this to be n minus k and the next one of the other one. Uh, so only to uh, indicate that there is a reasonably easy to remember formula, L i and uh, m n minus j. And this is sort of, uh, in weight k. So here is an n minus k part and here is a k part. And the, the sizes of j and i should be should be used, uh, should be chosen such that it matches. So this is the uh, where I don't uh, say any anything more about this sign here. Again, we're only interested in in the k minus one, uh, k equals one case. And uh, and it may be instructive to give examples and for n equals one and n equals two. So for n equals one, what do we have? So the group uh, which I haven't uh, officially- Sorry, Herbert, we missed a question in the chat. Sorry. Um, a little while ago, someone was wondering, are ML and LM the same? Uh, no, there's supposed to be an anti-automorphism swapping between them. But this is something I, I'll try to swap under the rug at the moment. So that at the moment, we really separate the two, left and right. But uh, there, there is a relation between them, as you would imagine, right? You have a pair, so why should uh, the order matter much. And indeed, there, there, there is a relationship between the uh, Amoto uh, polylogs, but uh, up to sign, mm -hmm. that will uh, give the same. Ah, so, uh, sorry, other questions? Maybe I should. 
we have moved to uh, to a sum over all n, right? Because you had one n before, but now we have a direct sum over all n. So the, for the full coproduct, it's a sum over all k. Yes. So this is sort of for fixed k. I think before we had a fixed n, but now we take a direct sum over all n, right? Otherwise, your terms on the right yes, don't yes. live in anything. So the Almoto algebra sort of should have a dot of f is the direct sum of all a i of uh, f i greater than zero, where I need to say what a i of zero of course, uh, a zero of f is, which uh, one takes to be z. Uh, and then the a i is sort of generated by the Almoto n, uh, Almoto i logarithms. So by the pairs, modulo those relations. And then the, there is also an, an algebra structure, which uh, essentially uh, is the product of two simplices, and then decomposing it again in, or triangulating it again, so formally. So there is, uh, but I uh, don't want to talk about this much, but the whole thing should have a whole algebra structure. And uh, yeah, so I'm mainly interested in the co-product of this. And then the nk equals one case. Uh, yeah, what, what, what is L, A1 of Lm? So we have L0, L1, and M0, M1. Two pairs. What can we attach? Well, so the integral is, the differential form is given by d uh, log z0, with that uh, sort of is the coordinate for L0. Uh, no, uh, sorry, the other way around is, I think, more standard. So you have the d log of one minus uh, z naught, and you integrate from m naught to m one. So I'm uh, viewing those as points in uh, p one uh, each. So we need to uh, identify maybe with an affine uh, charge to make this to make sense of this. But then you see, essentially, that's the log of, well, where Z1 becomes M1. Yeah, now I should have really. OK, let, let me just. Uh... Uh -huh. Can I do this? Maybe it's uh, <clears throat> very dodgy. But essentially, that's the, the, that's the idea. And then you have M1 minus L1 divided by M1 minus uh, L0. Uh, divide by the same thing with m naught in place of m1. This is the cross ratio, a very specific uh, cross ratio. And again, we drop the log and essentially only are interested in this part. So this part is in f cross, that is the, the Almoto, um element that we attach to A1. Again, we have like the first case, A1 of F is isomorphic to F cross. But the second one is um, possibly even more instructive. So we still have the picture. Oh, maybe not. So I of uh, what's the co-product of zero? Um, a, um, no, sorry. Uh, I want the co-product of L n. Under the co-product, we get four terms. The first one is, well, again, as I said, we mark two, one each. The L naught and M naught occur in all those uh, terms. Let's just put them in the same slot. And then we choose one, so let's say L1 here. Then we are left with only L2. Uh, so this is, ah, so I haven't introduced uh, what this bar means, it means projection. 
but for now it's sort of a formal thing. And then we have M1 here and L1, and here is M2. Then you get minus the same thing, except that uh, L1 is swapped with L2. We also subtract the same thing with M1 and M2 interchanged, and then we add uh, the ones where both have been swapped. So here only one swap each, and then here both swaps. And those, those four terms indicate the full uh, um, co-product of a generic Almoto die logarithm. So now I should maybe, uh, yeah, think um, L1 slash whatever means uh, projected from. So I've now passed uh, to sort of the dual picture where L1 say marks a vertex and we project from L1. So the cross ratio here, so um, get a term L1, L1, and we get three by three determinants. L1 is in all of those, then L0, L2, and M0, no, uh, M, and M1, yes, M1, M0. These are in the usual sense. But this is a product of uh, determinants in both numerator and denominator. So where these are three by three, uh, so three by three determinants as we've chosen our points in P2. So um, L0, L2, M0, M1, that's corresponding simply defined as this expression. And this is a projected cross ratio. And the more general uh, thing where, uh, where we project from a whole set of those uh, capital I over there, then it, it will just uh, go down in, uh, go up in co-dimension. So we project from a subspace um, generated by, spanned by those. Maybe that's the uh, crucial uh, observation here. And surprise, I think, was, so gone to a company, um, this expression can be written written as a combination of, turns out, nine uh, Steinbergs. So where Steinberg is of the form, uh, say, uh, A tensor. So none of these uh, is remotely uh, close to this. So one really needs to uh, work to get such an expression. But uh, once done, this now gives the relation to the motivic cohomology. So the in weight two, more precisely, the blossus Lin complex. So there's a morphism of complexes, you take A2 going to A1 tensor A1 as the top line, and you take the block Switzerland complex, if you've heard about it, where you have the so-called block group in the first slot and the wedge two of your F cross or the tensor product of F cross with itself in the second slot. So just uh, as motivation why. Uh, one might be interested in that as well. Now, Gontorov uh, also uh, gave a formula of the Almoto tri logarithm, but not as far as we are aware of uh, for the higher ones. So, Gontorov uh, also uh, A3 of Lm 
via uh, classical polylogs. Uh, uh, so polylog. But he also gave sort of the, the building block uh, that's needed for writing down the symbol. So certainly he had it, but maybe it's not in explicit form in his paper. Uh, so the symbol attached to a general, a uh, N of LM. And the symbol is expressed in terms of Flicker coordinates. So these are n plus one by n plus one determinants with uh, columns from the Li and the M, Mj. So uh, we have the following sort of kind of proposition exercise uh, from to extract from his work, the symbol of, uh, let me write a n of um, v n, v n plus one up to v two n plus one. Hopefully that is, so we have a vector of n plus one, in the first, before the uh, semicolon, and n plus one in the se uh, after. This is the uh, alternation over n plus one in the first uh, block and n plus one in the second block of the following simple expression. Take v1 up to, uh, in order, up to v n plus one. Tensor with, uh, so we need n plus one in each slot. Then we have v2 uh, up to v n plus two tensor, and we need uh, n such factors. The last one has to start with uh, the n, therefore, and we have to end before the before we finish. So v2 n plus uh, v2 n. And you see the special role this time I've chosen V naught the first here and the last there, which is a bit more uh, psychologically maybe more also easier to write. So the alternation over those n folds, so this lies in F cross tensor F cross uh, uh, n times. Let me write it like this. But it's a huge sum. Right, the alternate we alternate over the first n plus one and over the second n plus one independently. So now the upshot is the um, uh, theorem uh, with uh, Stephen and with uh, Daniela. Uh, the symbol of uh, a n, just abbreviated to v here, um, can be written in a surprisingly simple way as a sum of iterated integrals. But for this, we need to introduce, uh, otherwise it's a, Party that's cumbersome to introduce to, to a state. What I adumbrated as the new choice of coordinates. So one could try to see that successive tensor factors here overlap a lot. And uh, this is kind of built in. Um, we put rho i as, so we fix two uh, points in uh, 
the n among 2n plus 1. So we consider configurations. I ah, should have said that maybe. Configurations of 2n plus 1 points in Pn. On fix. Uh, so they are up to simultaneous action of PGL n plus 1. Um, and then row i equals row i. We fix the first, the zeroth and 2n plus first in a sequence uh, indexed by zero up to 2n plus one. And we take successive ones, just like uh, what we've seen here, up to i uh, plus n. No, uh, plus n minus. So we need a uh, zero and so we need n minus one and this is defined as the quotient of two almost identical clickers so the first ones just in index index by uh, the subscripts here together with one of the special points was v naught and then we have the same one the same expression here but then paired with the last of those vectors and those quotients turn out to be surprisingly uh, uh useful and the key property and i just want to state before i uh maybe finish uh um so think of the following picture if you uh try to mimic that with the sequence one to n then you have uh two to n plus one three to n plus one so in general, if you take away, say, the i-th, maybe the i-th slot, yeah, we take the, away the i-th of these row coordinates that would uh, take away those. All the others either have both uh, i and i minus 1. So any expression in say, a rational expression in the row i's. Uh, uh, call it row j, missing a specific index, missing index i, say. Turns out to be invariant under both the transposition I, I minus one, so the transposition swapping the two, and the same thing but shifted by n in both. And this property seems to be surprisingly uh, powerful and allows us to argue with cancellation of terms in, uh, in those alternating sums. So maybe that, that's, I'll leave it. Uh, at this point, I already uh, ran a little over what Rob wanted me to talk about. And thank you very much for your attention. Hey, okay, thank you. Uh, are there questions? Um, what are the A's in this uh, surprising fact? Look like a tensor one minus a. Ah. What do they look like? Um, they look like good question. Um, I think essentially they are projections from one of the. There are different ways to write it actually. So l i uh, slash l zero up to l two and the i left out, and then you have m i m j. Well, with, yeah, same, M0, MJ left out, and M2. So, right, so these are two of those, and here we have two of those. They get projected uh, cross ratios in their own right, but they're different from, uh, um, ah, hang on, uh, these now you can map to, uh, to X. A goes to 
or bracket goes to a tensor one minus a. And if you formally sum minus one to the i plus j, aren't you leave out one uh, from the right, leave out, uh, but project from one of the ones on the left, then uh, this gives you nine terms that add up surprisingly to the same expression on the other side. You can also do that uh, uh, with the M's. So there you see already the symmetry that uh, was uh, alluded to earlier. So there are two ways at least in which we can write this. Are there other questions? Uh, any questions from the chat? Okay, uh, let's thank the speaker again. And the uh, second talk can be heard almost immediately. Uh, yeah, we are going to.